other particular lady had a hearing defect and, and was very tentative to us as children. And then when you move from my immediate family, my mother and father, perhaps the next person was Benjamin E. Mays. And I say that because I was 17 when I went to Morehouse. And I perhaps had accepted unconsciously segregation because I used to go to the Fox Theater and go around the back and pay to go into the, you pay in the front and go around the back and go up the steps uh, to look at to look at the, the movie. And I did that, I guess, without thinking. But I would do it every week. I would go to the Fox Theater. So I was accepted in the Morehouse and was to report to Morehouse on a Tuesday. And Monday, when I, and that Sunday, I went to the Fox Theater, as I always did, and paid in the front, went around the back, going up the steps to look at the movies. And that Tuesday, Mays addressed the, the uh, student body. Every Tuesday, he would address the student body. And I was sitting on the front seat, my first day at Morehouse, my second day at Morehouse. And the topic they spoke from was the fact that Morehouse men could never and must never pay for segregation. He talked about the evil of segregation and how it's, the premise of it was that one group of people was better than another. And he said to us, Doctor, that, that if you go to a segregated theater and you pay to go upstairs to see that theater, you're paying for segregation and you're admitting that the people downstairs are better than you, people who can come to the front door. And I was sitting on the front seat and I thought May saw me going into the theater. <laughs> I thought he was talking directly to me. <laughs> and I sat there, and he said, Mohan's men must never pay for segregation. <laughs> and I want you to know that from that day forward, I never ever went to a segregated theater. But what May said to us on that day was this. He said, get yourselves an idea and cling to it and worship it as though it was Almighty God. Because in order to survive in a segregated society, you must be ironclad and still girded. And it was that ironclad and still girded philosophy that became the basis of my personal philosophy. And I really thought that if I wanted to do something, had to do it because Benjamin Mays was expecting the very best from me. So other than my mother and my father, he had more influence.